Artcentric Podcast with Rafi and Klee. Hola, you amazing artist. It's Rafi and Klee. And today we're going to talk about art show fails. Yay. Easily one of my favorite things to talk about. I know. Well, it's going to be a lot of fun because I know that a lot of people are putting themselves out there uh, for the first time. They've mm-hmm. put themselves out there a few times. And I know that when things don't go the way that you want them to go, it's easy to feel like a failure. Or like you totally did something wrong or like, yeah. Exactly. So we decided that because we've had a lot of experience uh, doing art shows that we would talk about some of our most memorable art show fails. Yeah, I think it'll be fun. Uh, We can talk about them um, partially so you guys know you're not alone in this and also perhaps in some cases talk about a good preventative measure. (laughs) In some cases, there are some things that you're not going to be able to prevent yeah. or prepare for. And I want to I want to say that that's some of the um, the things that I like talking about is the fact that no matter how much you prepare, uh, you know, there's still going to be a fail. There's still a possibility right. for a fail. Wendell is like, do I choose the worst art show fail from a whole host of art show fails? <laughs> I know. I feel like that too, Wendell. <laughs> I would say that the majority of the time, I mean, it depends on what your mile marker is for success versus a fail. You know, there were some shows that we did where like just the fact that we talked to one person, I was like, when? (laughs) You know, like it was like something where I had to make sure early on that success wasn't geared by um, how much artwork I sold. Because I could tell you out of the many, many art shows that we've done, I would say that about 30% of them, um, I maybe sold one piece or nothing. Mm-hmm. And when I talk about one piece, like one of my little like $20 pieces. And luckily for those shows, when we left, I was like, yes, win. <laughs> Cameron said my worst art show fail was standing in front of my first place artwork getting official pictures taken for the newspaper with red stained teeth from fruit <laughs> Yes, that's awesome. I love that. Mm-hmm. Um, by the way, for everybody that's listening to this, we have our amazing rogue community here with us. So if you hear us reading comments, that's who we're reading comments um, with. Now, we're not just talking to ourselves. They will you know, provide us with their insight and awesomeness. And probably some of their art show fails. Yes, that would be amazing. Diane said, I mentioned in one of the last lives that my tent blew over during my very first show. I spent the remaining five hours holding on to the poles instead Instead of of selling. selling. You guys, weather is a huge factor. In fact, let's get into our first art show fail, which would be, I want to say Jocko's the show that we had at Jocko. So this was in the early days, uh, in the very early days. And Clee and I were pretty much doing as many shows as possible to like show our artwork. And there was one day that we decided that we were going to do what we called divide and conquer. I was going to do the market and Clee was going to set up at a two day show that was taking place um, on the bayfront, like mm-hmm. right on the water. And then Rafi was going to meet me there after his market finished and then be there with me for day two. Yep. So like I was going to do the market. So I'm set up at the market. I've got no tent. I've got maybe some easel set up with a few paintings. Just <laughs> it's just a like a patch of grass. And I'm like, all right, well, you know, not much is going to happen, but at least I'm going to like see some people and say hello. And Clee went to the other show. Now, this is, like I said, in the early days. So we had one phone. Mm-hmm. We didn't have two phones. Uh, so there was no way for us to communicate with one another. So I was like, all right, I dropped her off, wished her luck, and then went and did the market. And then <laughs> our friend Dean got a call. On his phone because I was on the pier and it was early in the year, so the winds were really high. The winds were so strong that my tent was trying to go into the bay and I was trying to hold it down. And I was like, I'm not going to be able to hold this tent down. So I called Dean and asked if I could talk to Rafi. And he grabbed Rafi and I was like, the tent's going to blow away. I need to do something. So Dean was actually nice enough to come and help me hold the tent down so that I could get it closed and uh, and partially put away until Rafi could get there. Yep. And then um, I got there 
earlier. I left, I actually left the market earlier and went there. And what we did was there were these big um, metal, you know, those dividers that they use to like block off streets. Yeah, like ballast or whatever like they call Like ballast. There were, there were a bunch of them like set up because originally they were going to block off the street. And so we had them behind our tent and I zip tied my walls to these big metal ballasts and positioned the walls in a way where the wind was either blowing it, it was blowing into the artwork so it wasn't blowing it into the ocean and we still set up um at that show and froze our butts off yeah and watched the show organizers huddling inside drinking cocoa and offering cocoa to the patrons and not checking on us not one time yep so that was one of those learning experiences where the only reason we did that show was because the show organizers reached out to us and said hey we really need we know that you guys know a lot of artists will you uh help us get some artists for the show and so every single artist that did that show was miserable and it was a two-day show and i remember after that day um, and after seeing the way, like the show organizers did not come out to help Clee when she was they going cared through, not. like they just kind of stood there and they watched all the artists struggling. And I remember going to the show organizer and telling him like, we're not coming back tomorrow, you know? And he's like, well, the weather should be nicer. I'm like, no, we're not, we're not coming back. Not because of the weather. We're not coming back because you guys didn't lift a finger to help anybody. And in fact, I'm going to tell all the artists here that we're not coming tomorrow. And if they don't want to come, they don't have to come. And that's pretty much what we did. Mm -hmm. We just didn't show up the next day. So the art show fail there was that we were really good at checking the weather. And the number one rule is if it's windy, you better be prepared and Most definitely. we did not check the weather so that was that was our fail cameron said with easy ups we hang jugs of water from each leg and pray for the best i can't look at my photos of myself from that day even though overall it was an amazing day <laughs> he sold three pieces of i art. mean that's awesome though cameron that's like a memory yeah jugs of water weren't gonna hold down our canopy not that day um slightly <laughs> off topic when we closed on our sunflower house they had this beautiful cake prepared for us and we happily ate it because we were delirious and hungry and um what we didn't realize was that the blue frosting on the cake was like almost semi-permanent dye and our entire mouths were yeah, filled with blue. it was just everything was blue and not only did we film a bunch of video footage that went online from that time but i also rushed home to meet the utility company guy with just like blue <laughs> <laughs> and did not realize until after the fact oh I, my whole mouth was blue with zombie teeth yeah now, I want to say, Cameron, the jugs of water hanging from each leg, that's great. Uh, we also have weights that we put at the bottom. They're like 10-pound weights that you could stack on top of each other. Mm -hmm. um, I've also seen people create the PVC weights, which are really good. Yeah, they'll fill them with concrete or um, um, sand. Sand. You could also do the bags, like the construction bags. Mm -hmm. um, the one thing that I recommend, though, if you're tying down your canopy is to actually bring rope and bring additional weights so that you could like not only tie down the legs, but tie down the top. There's a lot of places where you can't put stakes in the ground. So it's really nice to have weights where you're tying your canopy down um, so that the top doesn't shake. Because honestly, if a canopy is going to go, having weights on the legs isn't really going to do much. You it's going to shake yeah. side to side until it just goes. Yeah. And we've had, we've had a few shows like that though. The one thing that I will say, if the wind starts picking up and there's a storm coming, drop your canopy. Yeah. Drop your canopy because you will have so much more. And that way all your stuff is still now it's a little bit harder when you have walls, but like in those cases I would like cut my walls and just lay them down with the paintings on there and then just drop the canopy down. What he means is he would cut the walls loose, not actually. Yeah, because I zip tie, I zip tie my <laughs> walls to to the canopy. On hand said, "I'm starting my show to do list with prepare for wind." Yes, <laughs> wind is one of the biggest factors, most definitely, especially in the spring and fall when the seasons are changing in a lot of areas. That's when the wind is epic. 
And you just have to look out for it. <laughs> Kirkman said, and everything was blue from him inside, inside. and out. <laughs> yep. Diane said, definitely always have heavy things to weigh down the canopy in a pinch, too. Like if you have a table, like a fold-out table, we've um, anchored the center of the canopy mm-hmm. to uh, one of our six-foot tables to keep it like stable yeah and the nice thing is that our canopy was vented like uh artist haven says paying Mm -hmm. for an extra bit for vented canopy is the bee's knees yeah it was vented so you know even though i mean some of those gusts of winds wind is gonna like just tear your canopy apart and i had uh also for like two day shows i had developed uh built a conduit piping system to hold the legs together to reinforce it to reinforce it so Always, always, always. You know what? If it rains, if you're looking at the forecast and there's rain and it looks like a drizzle, no big deal. Um, But if it is wind, look at the wind. Wind is number one on the list. Diane said, my third show I was selling soy candles and the sun came in at an angle and started (laughs) melting my candles. I've seen that happen to people. That's the worst. The the, The reason that my canopy walls are shade cloth walls is because of the sun. The sun, the sun is a bit of a, there have been shows that we've done where like we didn't think about where the sun was going to rise and like where it was going to go. And so like we didn't pay attention to that. And then at one point, you know, the sun is in front of you. So you're blocked off by the canopy. I was like, this is great. And then towards the evening, the sun was like burning the back of my head. (laughs) Yep. Wendell said my worst fails had to do with the neighboring booth selling thousands upon thousands of dollar items with overflowing crowds filling my booth, waiting in line to buy the dollar junk. Oh, neighbor placement at shows, especially if you happen to be at a show where they don't require everything to be artisan made, where they allow resellers sometimes can sometimes can be okay we've had shows where it's totally okay sometimes less okay less okay and that's why it's okay if you if you are doing a show and i know that for a lot of you guys doing your first few shows or stuff like that like you don't want to you don't want to be annoying right but you got to remember like you're you're a business so if you have a setup somewhere and you're like oh this is this is not you know don't don't be afraid to ask the show organizers is there any way that i could be moved um, to a different area. Uh, I know that we've yeah. done that. We've done that a few times for for various reasons. It's one of the other reasons that whenever we're doing a show, we show up at least an hour earlier than when ed- anybody else shows up because then we're you know it's like you get the pick. You have a little leeway. Yeah. So my next art show fail that comes to mind is um, it's pretty sp- specific, but it's bringing white tablecloths to wine walk. <laughs> And you can see where this is going. So if you're going to have like table displays, I recommend probably having at least two sets of tablecloths, maybe one light and one dark, depending on what you're showing off. I had one set. It was like a cream color. My jewelry looked nice on it and I brought them out to everything and they were stain resistant, but there's a limit to stain resistant. So we're at Wine Walk. It was our second year. Second year doing Wine Walk. Walk, Yeah. And um, this lady came in, and I'm pretty lax about that stuff. I'm I'm not like, don't set your stuff on. I usually let people pretty much do what they want to, except for little kids with Cheeto fingers. Yeah. Um, I'm careful with them. <clears throat> little kids, it, it, the same thing with the artwork. Like, a lot of times people are like, oh, this really could, could I touch? I'm like, yeah, go ahead and touch. touch. That's the reason that I have texture on my paintings. But whenever I see a little kid coming in, and they have an ice cream cone, or they're eating a bag of Cheetos, I'm like, keeping an eye and I'm like don't don't touch so um this lady and she felt pretty bad about it spilled a an entire glass of red wine on my tablecloth and she was really apologetic um and we even exchanged information and I gave her my business card and she was like I'll look you up later um she pretty much made a beeline for the exit yeah after it happened even though I told her don't worry about it fortunately I was able to kind of reposition trays and stuff to sort of cover it up. But also, everyone that saw it was like, oh, yeah, (laughs) wine walk with white tablecloths. I know. I was like, well, you know, at least somebody enjoyed the jewelry so much that they weren't even paying attention to their glass. You actually had a second spill when we did the Baytown Wharf. 
she ended up buying oh, that's a bunch right. of jewelry. Yeah, Jill. Mm -hmm. Jill bought jewelry and paintings and all kinds of stuff. And her and her husband came in and they had such a great conversation that I think she like moved her hands like this and it was like, pfft, yeah, just a bunch of a bunch of wine, red <laughs> wine all over everything. We made good friends with them, though. Uh, Diane said, after the candle situation, I made sure to bring in walls to put around my canopy for shade. Yeah. Yeah. That's how, that's how you learn. That's where the art show fails come in. I would say that <clears throat> my ultimate art show fail um, was Beer Fest. Beer mm -hmm. Fest is one of those stories that I took. And this is... This is one of those uh, situations where, like, I did the research, and that's why, like, a lot of people are like, which ones are the best shows to do? And I'm like, dude, you're not going to know until you do the show whether or not this show is a good fit for you. Because um, I thought Beer Fest, alcohol, selling uh, uh, artwork, go hand in hand, right? Mm -hmm. And so, like, I set up a beer fest and I'm thinking to myself, like, I'm looking at the stuff. I'm like, all right, so I'm paying a lot of money to do the show. I'm probably going to get a wristband. I'm picturing a day of hanging out, talking to people, having, you know, craft beers and stuff, selling some art, having a good time uh, with my wristband where I'm tasting craft beers. I'm like, this is going to be amazing. Um, so I did all the research and looked into all the stuff after doing and while doing the show, what I realized was a, they decided that the vendors were not going to get wristbands, which I didn't understand because we were paying more than what it costs to get a wristband and B the artists there and everybody that was set up was basically like a zoo exhibit. I was standing in the layout was just horrible. Right. So like nobody was like um, there was no reason for anybody to go like to. Like you were shoved off. In yeah, a corner. We, were, we were all shoved <laughs> off in a corner. And I remember looking at it and I, you know, I I, I am very vocal with show organizers. Right. Because I know that they're just people and they're whatever. I'm like, this was this was a very poor idea. I told them and they were like, yeah, you know, it's just that blah. And they kept making excuses. And I was getting like upset because I was like, nobody over there is uh, selling anything or even having conversations with anyone and not only that but we're not getting beer like what what is the deal here so like we ended up um i ended up talking to one person because one human looked over and i must have looked so pathetic that they were like oh and then they came <laughs> over and talked to me and they were going to buy a piece, a small piece of my art as a pity buy. And I was like, no, no, just just forget it. So, like, that's what I what I mean. When you go and you do a show, it's like always a learning experience. Now, meanwhile, this was another time towards the beginning where Clee and I did our divide and conquer. Clee was at Yoga Fest, right? So that's where my mind was. I was like, Yoga Fest or Beer Fest. I'm probably going to sell a lot of art at Beer Fest, right? That's what my my the the my brain meat was telling me and Clee meanwhile was like having all the conversations and having a really great time at yoga fest while I was just miserable so the next day um that day actually I told the beer fest people I was like I'm not coming back tomorrow it was a two-day show I was like I'm not coming back tomorrow you can find me at yoga fest peace yeah <laughs> and then I did yoga fest and yoga fest was great and as it turns out, in my brain, I was like, Yoga Fest, you know, like those hippies ain't going to buy anything and stuff. And I was completely wrong. And that was early on in, in the early days where I realized, like, you can make all the predictions that you want mm -hmm. about what a show is going to be like. But until you actually do the show... You just don't know. You just don't know. Kirkman said my first show was canceled a few hours um, due to torrential rain. A lot of vendors lost products. Tent next to me almost caved in from water. I had extra clamps to help save them. Yeah, that's Tor good. Torrential rain is a factor. Now, we had our canopy set up in a way where there were some shows where torrential rain came down. But like I said, I had that conduit system mm -hmm. and it kept the, the thing together. And then what would end up happening was that when the rain cleared up, um, we were one of the only people at the show so like people had to come and look at our booth and we would usually do really well at those shows that had torrential but yeah it sucks when 
There were a couple of times where the rain was so intense that there was nothing to be done for it. We I... did we did gallery night. Gallery mm -hmm. night basically what is on a street, and what ended up happening was this storm came out, came out of nowhere, and then we were set up on the street right by the sidewalk, and all the rain. You know how when it rains really hard, how water is just coming down the street, and it's about like seven inches in height. So what we ended up doing was I zip tied my walls up mm -hmm. and because everybody's canopy, like they were like not able to keep anything. So I zip tied my walls up. So the rain was actually coming in underneath. You put your tablecloths up. Yep. So the rain was actually the like water. We had, a river. we had a river running through our booth while and everything was secure while we were helping other people uh, salvage get, their art. Get and their stuff. Yeah. yeah. There was another time that Rafi and I, it was a Wednesday evening market, and we were trying to be present at the Wednesday evening market because it was a new thing. So we were trying to, like, get everyone excited about showing their stuff there. And we were set up at the very, like, um, end of the market so we could see all the way down Palafox, the main street, all the way to the bay. And we were pretty cavalier that day about the weather because it was like, ah, it could be whatever, or it could be fine. And we at one point heard the radar thing go off and we looked and we literally watched a wall of water come at us. It was like across the street. It was a, like a, a, a crossing, a street crossing. And we could see it across the street. And it was just like coming right at us. And it was like, holy shit. And we were like, there is no way we're getting out of that before it gets here. No. Like we're not. Um, and it downpoured on us and. Uh, all of us were scrambling around in the rain trying to get to safety. <laughs> it was one of those days. Yeah, it definitely was one of those days, too, where we were like, I don't know. I don't know. Today's like, not it's not a good idea to do the, the market today. The gut feeling was like, don't do it. But then we were like, oh, well, we don't want to let them down because, like, they were trying a new thing. And I was like... The, the reason, if you recall, that we were even in that spot where we had that vantage point of the wall of water was because no one came. It was, like, <laughs> five of us there. Us, a guy who sold chili. Not chili. Salsa. Salsa. That man ran. I had never seen that man move so fast in my life. Yeah. Um, so that when your gut feeling is telling you a thing, sometimes follow, it's, follow your gut on hand wants to know, would plastic tablecloths be better or do they look cheap? I would say unless you're selling food, don't do plastic. Yeah, I don't like the look, look of them. They look cheap. You might They're, as well get like stain resistant. Cloth There's a lot of um, tablecloths out there that they're made for um, trade shows and like banquets. So they're made to be reused and reused yeah. and spilled upon. Um, and those are pretty great. Like the wine stains did wash out of my tablecloths. Um, you just, you know, you have to endure for the day. Yep. Speaking of which, um, the worst thing that ever happened to my tablecloths was that I was doing the market and this lady had a new puppy with her at the market and she wasn't paying attention and it wasn't like trained and it peed on the like the bottom hem of my tablecloth as she not neither one of us noticed it until it was almost completely <laughs> like done and then she was like oh i'm sorry and she took her dog and left and then for the entire day Every single dog that came by my booth could smell the pee and, and then lift and it up made a leg, beeline. Lift it up a leg and mark their territory. And some of them got away with it and some of them, the owners, caught them before. But it was like eight hours of watching these dogs try to pee on my, <laughs> on my tablecloth. There's nothing that will put you more on edge than like watching every single dog that comes into the booth. Make a beeline for your booth. Yeah. Yeah. Diane said, oh, that reminds me of the show I did in a church where I paid for a five-foot table and ended up with only a three-foot to work with, shoved into a tight corner where I could barely move, let alone store stuff. Oh, yeah. man. We did one of the one of the shows that we did at a church because, you know, I have, like, nudes and stuff like that, So, but I also have trees and other things. So I'm very specific about the stuff that I bring out to the show. I want to make sure that it's, like, appropriate so. If I'm doing a, a show at a church, I'm not going to be like, here's my nudes, you know. And I remember being at the show and feeling so out of place, right? Because it was it was more of a 
what was it more of a like not even a craft show more of a what do they call those uh functions where like a swap meet type thing like a like a trade show yeah it's something more like a swap meet honestly and like it just it, it was it was weird and i was like okay well i'm gonna make the most of it because at this point you know we're like whatever this is a new experience like we'll make the most of it but i remember the woman walking around with the the mc for the show walking around with the microphone and like looking at stuff and she's like you know points at this lady that's selling like denim uh clothing and she's like denim Look at we have denim over here. What little girl doesn't like denim? And then comes over and it's like, and there's beautiful jewelry looking at Klee stuff. And then looks at my art and it's like, and then we have some art and then walks away. And I was like, oh shit, I just got I just got shamed uh, at this. You at got this show. glossed over. She didn't know what to make. I know. So okay. like and it was funny because that was the one show where I had more people um you know like they looked at i had these silhouettes of like angels with wings and um that were like these abstract silhouettes and somebody came up and there's like you know there are no female angels and i was like all right well i created them move along move along and then somebody (laughs) else came up and they looked at my trees and they're like god put leaves on trees i was like well (laughs) i didn't you know, it's, this it's, is a fall tree. <laughs> Cameron said church bazaars. Yes, bazaar is the word. Bazaar. Thank you, Cameron. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It was a holiday bazaar. Um, he, I would do Yoga Fest for sure. Said, yes, me too. Yoga Fest me was too. a good time. Yoga Fest has always been a good time. The Earth Day Festival has always been a good time. Even though the Earth Day Festival, the first time we did it, it was in a parking lot. And this is in Florida. So, you know, you do anything over. Um, uh, parking lot how darkly ironic too yeah and <laughs> what happens is the sun and that's something that uh we realize little by little is that the environment that you're in really makes a difference in how comfortable you are so if you're set up in a parking lot it doesn't mean that the show is going to be bad but it is going to mean that the sun is going to reflect off the ground and into your booth mm-hmm. and into your face mm-hmm. and make things very very hot and you could actually get sunburned from that reflection hitting you. Yes, you um, can. So yeah, it's but yeah, those all those kind of shows. That's why like even the smallest like shows where there's only like three or four people, like there's a lot of those that we did that we had a lot of fun and enjoyed the experience, even though it wasn't quote unquote busy. Um mm-hmm. it also helps that a lot of those shows is like ten to twenty dollars to do. And so like those were those were our shows. We were like, yeah. 10 or $20, give it to me. We're in. <laughs> Healing Sis said, I'm at the point that I look for indoor events because of the weather. The sun fades crystals and the wind laughs at you as it knocks down your displays. <laughs> okay, so this was a an ongoing fail for me. Was I When I started showing my jewelry, I was really stubborn about my displays and how they looked and my presentation. So I would chase my displays around all day anytime there was wind because I refused to change my layout until finally, like two years in, I was like, I've had enough of this. <laughs> and I started being willing to, step one was be willing to lay your trays down instead of, ha- I had them standing up. Yeah. Um, and be willing to move things around and put things behind to block if you have to. But I was really stubborn and really particular for a while there. Um, I would say save yourself the trouble and just be really flexible with how you're willing to set up. That's one of the reasons that I say in our videos, anytime doing shows, have a flexible setup and be extremely flexible. I have in one of the shows we did, I think it was the, the Art Fest and Golf Breeze, it got so windy that I ended up just laying, you know, like, Basically, we had weights, we had jugs of water, we had bags of concrete, we had all kinds of things holding down the canopy, but the wind was like wreaking havoc on my walls. So what I ended up doing was I just laid my walls down and there was space uh, to the right of us. So like I laid my walls down and my paintings were literally on the ground on my walls. And here's the interesting thing about that. We came out in the newspaper 
The picture that came out in the newspaper is of me smiling, bent down with my artwork on me. And as it turns out, it was a beautiful picture, right? Displaying my artwork and myself. And I ended up selling more art as it was laying down on the ground because at that point, like I was more comfortable. Mm -hmm. I didn't sell anything. And a lot of people were complaining that they were having a hard time selling stuff. And I think the moment that I just laid my walls down, I was like, fuck it. Like, this is this is what, what I'm doing. I don't care. Um, I started selling stuff. And that's where I realized, like, just be flexible. Because what ultimately matters is that you're comfortable. That you are comfortable in your own skin. And that you're not chasing your displays constantly. Or Yeah. That show was notorious for wind. Yep. It happened. It was windy every year. The location that it was in. And here's the irony is... It was a really great show, like, every year. It got a lot of patrons. People were excited about it. Mm -hmm. They had a good um, staff, good volunteers. Everything about it was great, but it was notorious for wind. People would have bets every year, like, which direction is the wind coming in from? Like, how many canopies are going to... Because every year, at least a half dozen canopies got taken. It was like the canopy gauntlet of a show. Yeah. Um, And so the people that had done it... Uh, more than one time like new like this is this is thunderdome of art shows come prepared that's where we realized that our our conduit system was actually really Mm -hmm. good because we rolled up in the morning and as we were pulling into the parking lot there was a bunch of canopies just destroyed and off in a corner that had gotten blown and there was like artwork and like different stuff everywhere and canopies like bent in and and stuff because overnight like it got really windy and our canopy was like standing (laughs) and that night that night uh the lady that was next to us we were like why don't you go ahead and zip tie your canopy to ours because i know that our canopy is going to be fine Mm -hmm. and so it was our canopy and her canopy that was standing amidst this like destruction of canopies everywhere. And I was like, I'm so badass. I know. <laughs> and also, sorry for everyone else. Sorry for everyone else. Valerie said, I'm doing my first shows late this summer and fall. Definitely appreciate hearing about the fails and lessons learned. Kelly said, most of the art in church is nudes. <laughs> You're right, Kelly. This is true. On hand said, I know you've said in the past, but where do we find your tutorial on making canopy walls? On um, YouTube. It's on the YouTube. Just look up, go to go to the YouTube videos um, and go to the YouTube page and look up DIY art festival walls. And there should be two videos. I had to do two videos because like I showed how I create my walls and then I start getting an influx of stuff like how do you put them up? And the reality is I just put hinges on them and then I zip tie them to the canopy. Um, so then I did a second video. So there's two videos up there, one on how to build them and then one on how to put a hinge on it and stand it up. Um, but really the whole idea behind it is to be flexible and you figure out your own way of, you could sandwich board it from the top. You could put the hinges on the side. You could just leave them loose and just zip tie them to the canopy or to the legs of the canopy. Like they're incredibly versatile. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Another art show fail that comes to mind is being like, meh, when it comes to bringing cash with you. We harp a lot on, like, make sure you have a card reader, you can take credit cards, make sure you accept all the payment apps or however many you're comfortable with. But the other side of that is not bringing cash to make change with. Um, And there have been shows where, like, all day... I had to like ask neighbors to help me break. We were we were those guys. We and were those guys. We were the people that were like, "Do you have change for a 20? <laughs> and you don't want to ask the same person like more than once or twice. And so there was a day where I had to like make the rounds and hit up different people. You don't want to be that guy. It's good to have a, a change box or at least a pouch where you can keep a little bit of change. Sometimes you're prepared and you bring change, and somebody wipes you out first transaction because they want to pay with a huge you know, bill. Yeah. That's happened too. But also uh, have cash because some shows, depending like if you go to get food uh, or something to drink, some of those booths also don't take credit cards. Um, And so being stuck at a show without cash can be problematic. What I recommend is if you can, the the minimum amount that we brought out to shows and we were fined was um, like a hundred dollars. 
you know, a 20, a couple tens, some fives and singles. Mm -hmm. Um, but I would recommend like bringing at least $200, a few twenties, you know, so you can make change for a big, a hundred bill. Yeah. If, especially if it's a bigger show, a hundred usually would cover us. Um, you know, when I was being like scrimpy about it or when funds were low or I was lazier, I forgot I would have like $20 in change with just, me just a bunch of a bunch of singles and fives and sometimes i would get lucky and sometimes things would go on sale for round <laughs> dollar amounts so that i could avoid making change i'd be like you know what that says 24 but it's actually 20 yep. today um so there's workarounds but yeah again that's that's just being flexible being flexible mm-hmm. uh the one thing you don't want to do is you know it's it's much better like if somebody wants to pay cash and you say okay hold on a second let me go get some change for this the one thing you don't want to do is be like oh i'm sorry that's too big like go somewhere else and that was you know it was like you know what i as if i have the money in my hand then i have the money in hand i could go somewhere else and find change i for will this person. get change for you exactly yes. uh tish said craft art show fails have happened at every show i've done i used to do multiple shows every week but i learned from each one key one don't cut soap at a show they become snacks apparently oh no <laughs> Oh, no. Yep. <laughs> and they look delicious. They do look delicious. They look delicious. And some of them smell like desserts. I've seen that. I've seen that, too. Uh, what's her name that did the goat soap? Like, mm-hmm. she would chop it into little pieces so that people could test it out. And I was like, that looks good. I remember when I was doing my rounds, I was like, that looks delicious. And she was like, it's soap. I was like, oh. <laughs> well, it still <laughs> looks delicious. <laughs> Hi, Chris. We're late, but we are here. Take the cash. Take the cash. Yeah, yeah absolutely. So, um, so one of the other shows, one of the other fails, I would say, is interaction with people, right? Um, where you interact with somebody that comes in and you are left with that, like, ooh, I wish I should have, you know. <laughs> yeah, if you need a time machine so you could go back and say, I would I would say this. Yeah, and I would say that I am fantastic. Like, I could do a show and somebody could come in and say whatever it is that they want to me. And, like, I know that I'm going to have some kind of, like, good uh, quirk or whatever. Quirk. What, quip. Some good quip um, for them. But that's only because... I have had many times where somebody said something and I was like, uh, you know, I just froze, froze and didn't know what to say back. Mm-hmm. I remember and it's, it mostly in the early days, because then eventually what I would do is like think of things. What's the worst thing that somebody could say? And then I come up with a quip. But in the early days, I remember the first time somebody walked in and they looked at the art and they said, well, huh. Whoever created this stuff must be disturbed, right? And then they looked at me as like, who's the artist, you or her? And I didn't say anything. I was like, just stared at them. And then, of course, they left and I was like, oh. And then I remember like that made me feel bad Mm -hmm. for like 10 minutes because then somebody came in and actually bought one of my disturbed artworks. And I was like, screw that guy, you know. But yeah, that would that would have been it could have been a fail. That was avoided because someone bought something. But... I've had plenty of fails where somebody said something snarky and I just blanked and didn't say anything. And one of the takeaways is remember that any and all temperaments are present at at art shows. Most people are going to be in a good mood cuz they're out doing recreational stuff, but some people no. I had a guy Pick a fight with me because I'm from Chicago. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And he, like, like it almost came to fisticuffs. Like, I could tell. Like, I could see the veins in his forehead. And it started off as, like, you know, a totally neutral exchange of, like, uh, talking, you know, somehow it came up. Because I think some people could tell because of how I talk um, where I'm from. Yeah. And and I think he said something like, well, I can see why you live here. Get away from there. And I was like, actually, like, I love Chicago. Like, it's, you know, my heart. <laughs> and he said something snarky back, like, I forget what. And then I got mad because <laughs> that's my hometown. <laughs> 
And then he was like, Ugh. and then he was mad, and you were mad. <laughs> And you're and both we, in your booth. We both got real quiet and like just turned and went our separate way. <laughs> <laughs> so it was super weird and awkward. Um, and so recognizing like some people like have short fuses. Some people are already angry. Wendell's like they, the guy must have been from Wisconsin. <laughs> maybe so, Wendell. <laughs> maybe so. Um, yeah, you just never know what's going to like um trigger somebody you know how they're gonna like respond no and then other things i remember um and this this would be an embarrassing one for you i remember this this woman walked into the booth and she was looking at your jewelry oh and she had a a physical we didn't didn't know she had a tick Uh uh-huh and she was like you know shaking her head all i could see was the back of her head looking at my jewelry trays shaking her head and disapproval Right? Is what this looked like. I didn't say anything, but on the inside, my feelings were hurt. And then she turned around to me, and I could tell she had a tick because she looked at me and said, Your work is so beautiful. And yeah. I was like, and I'm such She was still shaking an, her head. I'm and, such an asshole. Yeah. Don't prejudge. <clears throat> don't, yeah, do not prejudge. <laughs> Even if somebody's shaking their head at your stuff, don't sit there and be like, What? They don't like my work? You know, just yeah, just kind of assume like you don't know what's actually going on. You just don't know. I had a teenage girl. This was like really early. We'd been showing our work for like a couple of months. I had a teenage girl be like, I hate that. She was there with her mom, and her mom was like, Do you like any of this stuff? And she was like, No, I hate it. And I was like, Oh. <laughs> Right. But then, you know, you watch their interaction and like it became kind of apparent. And I'm I'm not saying she didn't hate my jewelry. Maybe she did hate my jewelry and that's fine. She hated her mom. She was in that mad at her mom. Yeah, she was mad at her mom. So she hated everything. It wasn't she could have pointed anything out and she would have been upset about it. Mm-hmm. So it's it's interesting because like those those are the things like get ready for those conversations and those interactions, because that's the fun part to me. Like those moments, those are the fun things things uh jenny says no one hates chicago like people not from chicago (laughs) it's true (laughs) chris said whenever stephanie gets a snarky comment at a market she smiles and says thanks for the comment yeah yeah i I, we've gotten to a point where like i i just have fun like i love i love when somebody comes in and says something because then i sit there and have like (laughs) i'll have a serious conversation with them like really well, that's interesting. You know, could because, you elaborate? Could you elaborate a little bit on that and and watch? Because a lot of people, when they come in and they make like some snarky comment or something like that, it's just an offhanded comment. And most times, it's because they're being funny, funny in front of their friends. And the worst thing that you could do to somebody who's trying to be funny in front of their friends is engage with them. So, like, mm-hmm. I I just it, and it's so funny because it's these experiences that have really caused me to be much more not confrontational <clears throat> assertive assertive i remember yeah. rafi had had about enough of the snarky teenagers one day at the market and um these teenage boys came by and the one kid was like boobs and rafi looked up and he was like first time seeing them <laughs> <laughs> and, and the kid turned re- five shades of red he got really embarrassed <laughs> Yep. <laughs> um, on hand said, yeah, the best I can get from my teen is, eh, not bad. <laughs> yeah, I mean, teenagers are also notoriously difficult to impress with anything. So there's that. Diane said, lol, I'm a Philly girl, and snarky comments just might get the Philly girl treatment. <laughs> yeah, never be afraid to return some snark, especially in the spirit of good fun. And also don't feel bad if you're totally caught off guard and you don't say anything because you yeah. blanked out. Because it happens. To because all it's of just us. ammo for next time. Like because you know that you're gonna go. Oh, I should have said this. And instead of like seeing it as a lost opportunity, take a look at it and be like, all right, well, next time something similar happens, I already, I already have my my you know ammo in chamber for what I'm gonna say. I'll tell you about my worst. I don't know what to say. Show fail. Um, ever. In fact, it's probably going to, I don't think I've ever told you guys about this and it's probably going to end up in a video at some point, but my very first art show was before I met Rafi. I didn't even realize I was an artist. I was just making stuff. I didn't even realize I was 
technically doing an art show or what that meant or what that entailed, I was helping plan an art show in my um, in my area because there were no art shows. I lived like just south of Chicago in Joliet, Illinois, right? Joliet does not have a lot of art centric things, or at least it didn't back then. So some friends and I got together and we pitched this idea for an art and music festival at our downtown park. And um, the people that run that, they were like, yeah, cool. Um, so we set it up. We got a handful of people to show art. My band that I was in at the time was booked to play the show. But I also had some like stuff that I had made. Like I had made these wings out of copper wire from theater stuff that I did. And that's pretty much what I was. I was like, I'm going to show that. So I had no tent. I had no tables. I had no, like, sun cover. I had no money to make change with. I didn't think to bring, like, basically I didn't bring anything with me. And I was like, I got there and I was like, how am I going to show any of this stuff? And so a friend put some, put some screws in a tree in the park. And so I was there, like, kind of off to the side under a tree with like a few pairs of wings that I'd made. And the wings were cool. They were copper wire and fabric and I was really proud of them. But I was kind of standing there like this awkward kid, <laughs> like under this tree with like three pairs of wings with no price tags, mind you. No idea how to talk to people. So my band like rocked the music portion of the show and I was like, I'm king of the world. I feel like such a badass. And then the next day I'm out there and I'm under this tree and this guy comes along and he's literally the only person to even look in my direction or speak to me because it's not even apparent that I'm selling these wings, <laughs> right? And he's like, these are cool. You made these? And I was like, yeah, I made these. <laughs> and he's like, how much for a pair? And I was like, I don't know, $40, which by the way, $40 it's is like really nothing, low. Nothing for, for those wings. A pair yeah. of custom wings that you could wear. I was like, I don't know, $40? And he says to me, $40? I can get a pair of wings from Walmart for $5. And I was like, yeah, I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> um, And that was my only booth visitor. No wonder you were terrified to day. do shows when we started doing shows. Yeah. <laughs> I guess so. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, I've what come you, a long way. What would you say now to somebody that was like, I get $40, I can get those at Walmart for 5 I'd be like, cool, uh, you know, have a good time at Walmart. You can't get these at Walmart. <laughs> <laughs> these are handmade. Um, hindsight comebacks are what showering is for, <laughs> said Ginny. That is the truest thing that's ever been said. I know I think about I think about like my first my first art show like showing my stuff and it was the Museum of Contemporary Art thing right and they first off the museum was handling all the hanging of the work right because it's professional right so they get the work and they have like crews of people there like hanging work like yeah, with measuring tapes and very like everything is very it's very serious business and um, I get there and I, you know, got to give them instructions, you know, like they ask for like written instructions of exactly how the artwork is supposed to hang, how far apart it's supposed to be from the other artwork, like all this stuff, you know, how high it hangs on the wall, everything, what the lighting's going to be like, where you want the lighting. So everything is super detailed. And I'm like, this is ridiculous. Like, is this what the art world is like? Because I don't want to do this. Like, this sucks. But like I sit there and I plan these things out. And I give them to them. And then I go in because you, as the artist, you go in and you evaluate the work um, that they did with the artwork. And I get there and my piece is hanging sideways. <laughs> I forgot about this. They, it, now, they're abstracts. They're all abstracts, right? But it's hanging sideways. And at that point in time, like, I was, like, super insecure and shy. So I didn't sign my artwork, right? Because as an artist, I... I the artwork is the presentation and my signature goes hidden in the back where nobody could see it. And so, you know, I get there. He's like, what do you think? I was like, um, and I look at it and I was so introverted and so shy that I was like, it looks great. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
Because in your mind, they would have had to get out the crane and the construction <laughs> crew to like flip it around. No, in my idea that, and then in my mind, I was like, well, this person, this person deals with our. This person is a real like. You so know, if they say that's so right, if side they up, say that this is what it's supposed to look like. Then they must be right. Yeah, yeah. I was. Yeah. I was like, oh yeah, it looks great. <laughs> what would I say today? Um, no. No, you 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 put that sideways. We need to rotate this. Yeah, this needs like, to be rotated. This is this is not correct, my my fine sir. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, it's it's funny because it's those moments though that I think of, and those are those are honestly the moments that I'm most proud of. I think of the first time that I was like selling my art at the flea market, and this teenage girl, teenage girl came by. And she looked at one of my trees and she was like, oh, this is so pretty. I love this. And I was like, thank you. And her dad walked up behind and he's like, well, that's nothing more than paint on wood. And so I was like, oh, you know, like completely I've like, oh, discovered. my God, I've been discovered. I paint on wood. And now, you know, and one of the flea market vendors behind me was like, well, so's your house. And at that, Zing. yeah, at that moment, I was like wait a second, I could talk back. I don't have to just take what they're going to say. I could I could be snarky. So, yeah, it's those experiences that really build up that, that your experience in doing shows is getting, like, when shit goes wrong and there's the fails and, like, you know, the moment that your <laughs> canopy gets blown away in a storm, you're going to take the necessary steps to make sure that it doesn't happen again. Or you guys have heard me say this. You chronically dehydrate yourself through a summer of shows because it's more convenient than locating and using the bathrooms. Yep. Don't do that Don't either. do that. Um, God, so many show fails with that one. I remember one show we were setting up. It was so hot. We were so dehydrated because we didn't bring any water. Um, and... There was a fountain, like this dirty, manky looking fountain across from us. Yeah. And I remember like I would I would instinctively walk in that direction because I wanted to A jump in the fountain and B drink the water in this manky fountain. So it was almost like, you know, uh Neanderthal caveman Rafi was taking over because Drink the water. Drink yeah, normal I was Rafi the wasn't same doing urges. Yeah. <laughs> just ridiculous so yes so if there's anything you can learn from our fails is a speak your mind at a show prepare for the wind um do not let your brain tell you that a show is going to be really really good or really really bad because you actually don't know until you do the show um be flexible with your setup so that if crap is not the way that you want it to be, that you are able to move around with it either during or before a show, you know? Like, if if the shit hits the fan, there's a storm, you want to be able to, like, take things apart quickly and, and move things around if you want to. And, um, you know, don't be embarrassed mm -hmm. about getting it wrong because it's just how it works. And my last bit of advice is... Don't freak out over the little stuff. Like, I have had neighbor, show neighbors lose their shit over, like, an anthill. Yep. Or a broken shelf. And, like, the whole, the whole show is ruined for them because of an anthill or a broken shelf. And, you know, freaking out and everyone around them is disrupted. And I've been that person, too, right? Freaking out over the little stuff. I, uh, this only happened to me one time, but I showed up at a show and the first thing I did, first thing in the morning, was stepped in a big, moist pile of shit. <laughs> and there was nothing I could do about it except try to scrape most of it off with a stick. I was there uh, helping <laughs> set up. And when it happened, I just got real quiet. I got I real quiet went around, too. When it, when it did my business. I got real quiet and real red. And I, and I had to live with the shit on my shoe for the rest of the day. And I was like, okay, it's going to dry. I mean, you cleaned most of it off. Yeah. Didn't, you didn't smell like a pile of poo. I mean, 
to me, I felt like right. all I smell like is poo now to everyone. <laughs> the lesson there was um, also like when you're assigned a spot at a show, just do a quick scan for stuff. Yeah, do a quick scan Shit. before you set up <laughs> and do a quick scan after you're done. To make sure you didn't leave anything behind. Yeah. But I have um, obviously uh, located poo in my area. Uh, one time there was a live wire sticking out of the ground. <laughs> in my area and the show organizers were like well you could put a table over it or you could go home if you want to <laughs> and i was like i'm gonna sit this one out <laughs> call me when when the live wire has been buried um but yeah i uh i could have let the steaming poop ruin my day but i i chose to calm down in that instance and make the most of it. And I ended up having a pretty decent day despite having poo on my shoe. And I think that that's, that's by far the most important thing is your perspective, you know, and, and catching yourself in those moments where just understand that no matter what, if you're setting up at a show or you're doing something, you're experiencing something new. Even if you've done hundreds of shows and now you're doing this particular show, right? It's still a new experience. And I think the reason that we've had, we've been able to do so many shows and have so much fun, even when things uh, don't go the way that we want them to go, is because we always make the most. That's our mission. When we do a show, we want to make the most of the experience, right? And I can tell you right now, if we did those shows and like our motivation was like, all right, we're going to make money. Um, it just, it wouldn't be worth it. It wouldn't be worth it. But it's the experience and understanding shit's going to hit the fan. Things are not going to, shit's going to hit Clee's foot, you know? Things are not going to go the way that you want them to. And how do you make the most of it? How do you walk away from that experience um, feeling more empowered? Mm -hmm. For me, it was those two shows telling the show organizers, I'm not coming tomorrow, not to this one. And I'm never going to do this show again. But also not condemning every single show that there is because I had a bad experience at one show. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, it's things like that. like Or, you know having a comeback for somebody that comes in and says something, you know, where I had, yeah, I'd had enough teenagers come in and be like boobs. <laughs> and then my response started to become like first time seeing them, huh? <laughs> and then they got real red. So like you just, you end up finding fun, fun ways of dealing with things um, where you walk away and you feel like a badass. Mm -hmm. Cause honestly, all the shows that we've done, whether they went good or bad, that's, that's right there. That's on my badass badge of like, yeah, we did all of this stuff. Mm -hmm. Valerie said one of the things I've learned from working in state parks, bring extra clothes and shoes. Yeah. And this is not bad advice for shows either, although we have never done this and it would have been smart to do. And, and it might be something that I keep in mind for future shows. Um, a lot of folks would bring their setting up my tent clothes that they could sweat in. And then they would go either to their car or to a restroom nearby, and they would change. Yeah, and freshen up. Yeah, and that's um, that's a really good idea because there were a lot of shows that I did in Florida where once we got set up, people would walk in and they would ask like, "Are you okay?" Because we were drenched. Did you get rained on? <laughs> no, it's just gross. Sweat. Yeah, like. Yeah, so that's that's a really good idea. That's a really good idea. Mm -hmm. Well, I think I think that we're at an end, and trust me, we're not at the end of our show fails. There are a lot of those are just the show fails that that are off the top of our head. But there's, yeah, there's there's a lot. There's a lot, and yeah. I would say that the majority of them, the majority of the time, there was one kind of failure or another. But again, it's just you know, it's a life experience, and. It could be a lot of fun unless you're like dwelling on the fact that something went wrong. And it's like when you get to a point where you're doing this and you're like, yeah, something went wrong. And, you know, this is what we did from there. Mm -hmm. It just it becomes less of a deal versus like sitting there and being like, yeah, this went wrong. And this, you know, and everything else. I stepped in poo and it just my day was horrible and blah, 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 blah. And I think it's really important to just 
Remember, it's it's an experience. Mm -hmm. Tish said another perk of working out of a motorhome that, that I, I never, never thought, thought of. of. Yeah, yeah. All right. Well, that is yeah. So that brings us to the end of this, and I, I'm doing a horrible job of ending the podcast. So for everybody that's here with us, our road community, thank you guys so much for being here. This was a really fun conversation. It was cool listening to some of your advice and some of your experiences. And for everybody listening at home, thank you guys so much for being here. If you like this and you want to subscribe to more like this, go ahead and click wherever it is that you need to click on to subscribe. And other than that, uh, you want to say goodbye, Clee? Good day. Adios. <laughs>